Hey everybody, how's it going? So today what I'd like to do is follow up on a community post in a video that I did about 11 months ago, going over a woman by the name of Lena Khan. Lena Khan has been nominated to become the chairwoman of the FTC, and she became the chairwoman of the FTC. And she appears to be, uh, how do I put this? Fed up with Amazon, Facebook, and everybody else's shit. That would be... Uh, one way to put it. You can read some of her work. I'll include a link down below. She had written something for the Yale Law Journal titled Amazon's Antitrust Paradox. Admittedly, I don't understand everything in it because I am not an attorney, nor am I an antitrust expert, but it would be, um, I, I don't think it would be generous to say that she is tired of many of these companies' shit. Now, this just so happens to come at the exact same time that Biden had asked the FTC, who she's the chairwoman of, to draft right to repair rules, and at the same time that the FTC had released a report, which I go over in this video, you can read this report here, it's about 59 pages long. The TLDR of this report is, you know when opposition lobbyists say that repair is dangerous for safety and security and safety and security, and it's all bullshit. That's the, pretty much the TLDR of the report, you can read through it. It's just, you know, the manufacturer's assertions, there's no evidence for them, and we haven't found any evidence for them, it's BS. She is very much into antitrust. She's the chairwoman of the FTC. She's younger than me. Admittedly, I'm, I just turned a year older this year, so I don't need a reminder of that. But she, she is young. She is not corrupt. And uh, she's a fire breather. She really does not want to put up with anybody's shit. And Willie Cade, who is a friend of Right to Repair in Chicago, a kind gentleman and scholar that I had dinner with the other day, sent me something that would not have been on my radar otherwise that is very, very interesting. Do keep in mind that this chairwoman, I would say, is someone who agrees with the concept of Right to Repair and is the chairwoman of the agency that Biden's executive order says should do something about Right to Repair. You tell me if this sounds like business as usual or someone who's sick and tired of corrupt shit. This is cool. Statement of Chair Lena M. Khan on issuance of commission statement regarding the criminal referral and partnership process. Today we are considering whether to adopt a commission statement that would redouble our commitment to making criminal referrals whenever we identify criminal antitrust or consumer protection violations. The policy statement highlights recent referrals by the commission that have resulted in criminal law enforcement and identifies best practices for assessing possible criminal activity uncovered during investigations. Referring it promptly to the appropriate law officers and maximizing the success of this work going forward. In particular, the policy statement commits us to pursuing cross-agency efforts to strengthening partnerships with federal, state, and local criminal law enforcement, and to publishing regular reports with data on the number of referrals we are making and the nature of the alleged conduct. I'd like to thank in particular Commissioner Slaughter and her team for their initiative and enthusiasm around this effort and policy statement and their diligent work to drive it forward. I'll note briefly three issues that are of particular interest to me in this area of work. First, I'm especially interested in the Commission's effort to coordinate with criminal authorities around wrongdoing by major corporations. Large firms have already been the subject of both civil enforcement by the FTC and separate criminal enforcement efforts in a host of matters, including Uber, MoneyGram, Western Union, Reckitt, Benkist Kaiser, and Bristol Myers Squibb. Given research suggesting that larger firms are more likely than smaller firms to be repeat offenders, and the fact that crimes by larger firms will often cause greater harm given their bigger scale, focusing our enforcement and criminal referral efforts on crime by the largest and more, most sophisticated corporations is likely to be a wise use of the Commission's resources. Second, both civil and criminal enforcers must confront critical questions around achieving deterrence. Wow. Oreo. Research shows that corporate actors can treat even seemingly high penalties as a cost of doing business, and the stock market price of defending corporations generally rise in response to the announcement of a fine, suggesting that under-enforcement and lack of deterrence may be pervasive. Individuals, by contrast, are generally more risk-averse, and empirical research suggests they are easier to deter. Pursuing individual liability in instances where top executives are responsible for or direct unlawful conduct is critical. Lastly, it's important that all evidence of criminal activity be appropriately referred, including instances where corporations have lied to or hid material information from FTC staff. Firms have been indicted for making false statements to the FTC or hiding material information from us on at least two past occasions. Continued vigilance in this area is essential. Redoubling our commitment and improving our processes to expediently refer criminal behavior to criminal authorities should promote accountability and deterrence, ensuring that Americans are better protected from unlawful conduct and corporate crime. So what she's saying here, the TLDR appears to be, that when we announce a fine for a company, their stock price goes up 
because the fine was such a joke that they get away with it. So we're done with that shit. We're criminally prosecuting you. As in, you know, if you do something that is unlawful, we will find who is responsible and we will put you in prison. That's gangster. I really, again, how many of you have read about a company or an individual that's done something that's illegal, immoral, or wrong? They get up there and they say, we are sorry, sir. I am sorry, sir. I do not recall. I do not recall. I do not recall. I am sorry. We do not recall. I do not recall. They get a little slap on the wrist or a $2 million fine and a bus- things go on business as usual. $2 million would bankrupt you or I, but it's literally pennies to many of these companies. The idea that they're not only going to have fines, but criminally prosecute as in you do something wrong, we throw you the fuck in jail. That is a considerable shift in antitrust enforcement in this country or in just enforcement of the laws in general in this country when it comes to people who are rich or companies that are rich. And I am interested to see how this goes. This is going to be an absolute gangbuster couple of years when it comes to right to repair and antitrust in general. And I look forward to seeing what's coming down the pipeline. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. And again, you bet your ass that you are going to see a lot of people go after Lena Khan. You are going to see a lot of people from every side of the aisle whine, bitch, and moan because God fucking forbid anybody be held accountable for the shit that they do. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that this is going too far? Do you think that people should continue to just get minor slaps in the wrist and go on business as usual? Or do you think that it's about time that when people lie to Congress, lie to the American people, and fuck you over, that they actually go to prison? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And by the way, look at what difference minor white balance and lighting changes make. Like, I looked at the video I did yesterday, literally looks like somebody just dug inside, scooped out my liver and kidney, and left me to die. I am the exact same person today as I was yesterday. Okay, one year older, and I did get a haircut for my birthday. But for the most part, same dude. And like, yesterday I looked like I was in a hospital. Today I look like I recovered. It's it's like, I'm the same dude. It's... I mean, it's literally, it's, it's been like, what, 16 hours since I did that video? Very interesting how that, how that stuff um, affects things. I really, ha- again, I don't really even have that much of a professional setup at home. I just kind of tweak it more because I do more videos here than I do in my office. That office video setup is like, I, I, I got to learn how to set white balance on my camera and do lighting because that shit's horrible. Anyway, see you all in the next video. Bye.